So why are we all here tonight? Well, as you may know, International Women's Day has been celebrated across the globe on March 8th for over a century. Today, millions of women, men, girls, and boys across 30 countries will come together to recognize and stand in solidarity for the rights, dreams, and empowerment of women. This is an occasion when women throughout the world come together to celebrate their achievements and to amplify their call for the better promotion of human rights, equality, and access to justice. In conjunction with Oxfam's Grow campaign, this year we, here in Vancouver, would like to consider International Women's Day as an opportunity to increase awareness for women's rights to land and resources. Good evening. I'm Linda Young, and I'm a volunteer with Fair Trade Vancouver. And first of all, I want to thank Oxfam for inviting us to participate. It's a real honor to be here to celebrate International Women's Day with you. It's my pleasure to honor, uh, to honor and to introduce our Fair Trade Vancouver woman champion, Trish Kelly. She's now recognized in Western Canada as a key voice in the emerging domestic fair trade movement, looking at local food production issues. So for all of these reasons, it's no surprise that Fair Trade Vancouver wants to recognize Trish's many accomplishments and to nominate her as one of Oxfam's 2012 Women Food Champions. Trish Kelly. Wow, thanks so much. Um, thank you very much to Fair Trade Vancouver. I'm lucky enough to live a 10 minute walk from the Strathcona's Ukrainian Hall where for the past two years or so, I've been helping the Babas, a group of very powerful, if slightly cranky women, <laughs> who make and serve thousands of pierogies a year to members of the community, because it gives me a chance to access a part of my cultural history and share it with people in my actual neighborhood. And like Michael suggests, I built community where before I lacked it. I am also a senior member of the Vancouver Food Policy Council, where I advocate for neighborhood food systems, which really is about valuing our capacity to feed each other and ourselves. And I feel very lucky to be in this room with all of you. Together, we know a lot about what we, it takes to create the world we want to live in. Thanks. Uh, it is indeed an incredible honor for me that the Vancouver Food Policy Council has asked me to introduce our second uh, champion. Carol Christopher has been uh, involved in working for a more just a sustainable food system for much of her life. I was thinking I might speak some Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> it was the ingredients manufacturers, those people that are getting all of those food components, plus making a lot of other ingredients that provide taste and texture and preservation and a multitude of things. The packages with all the long lists, all of those things have to be made by somebody. So it's the ingredients manufacturers talking to the food companies that assemble these different ingredients in novel products to sell back to us. And the way they talk to each other is quite striking. Because what they're saying essentially is, we do our job so good that we can fool Mother Nature. Do you get that? They would not talk to consumers that way. I'm not trying to vilify uh, it, either the manufacturers of the food or the ingredients, but just to say, this is a way of looking at the food supply, which I was just like aghast. And, and so on. So I think that's my elder advice at this st stage of my life is to say, let's make the tent as inclusive as possible and be as respectful and as warm in contacting even those people that we feel are not our, our best friends. Thank you very much. I've asked the two children, Inara and Amina, to just come and quickly just share in their words what makes their mother so special. Okay, okay. this is Inara. Our mom is special because she always uh, cares for us and takes care of us and she always feeds us the right foods and makes sure we're always healthy. <laughs> My mom works very hard. I grew up as a new immigrant uh, being told 
education, get a good job, settle in Canada. And I kind of went in the totally opposite direction. Um, I chose agriculture as my uh, vocation and my training, not coming from a farming family at all. So you can imagine the delight of my parents. <laughs> it has been my pleasure to find my new sort of group of people. Um, and working with gardeners, with young farmers, with people who are just interested in food, growing food, uh, learning how to can it, it's, it's been an amazing, amazing experience. It really does fulfill, uh, fulfill me it, hugely, and it's, it is finding my people. So We are about to start a new chapter in our family. Um, Neil and I have bought a farm on Vancouver Island, and so we're moving to start a farm and to actually put into practice what we've been preaching. Are my computer police. So when I am working too much, they are the ones who often pull the plug. For <laughs> them to recognize that mom is actually doing some kind of good work. 